So welcome to the round session. Uh, so this is the agenda. So uh, we're on a tight schedule. We have to be finished in one hour, I believe. Uh, I mean, I would like to have a backup there in one hour, but it will be very ambitious. So you, those of you who read the, uh, the website, uh, site, the page of the round session, they know that uh, there will be some announcements made on behalf of our sponsors and also some service uh, announcements. So, uh, yeah, we'll... Uh, yeah, so, most of the speakers, you will have to make a short announcement before you talk. And uh, you will read it from the laptop that is just uh, in this white thingy. And uh, I will put the announcement for you. And, uh, and that's it. So, we also have a very qualified jury of uh, four people sitting in the front. Martin, Christina, Shiro and you who will decide on the prizes, because there are up to five prizes will be awarded for uh, different categories. Yeah. These and are the uh, winners here. will get uh, beers. So, um, and uh, at the end of the presentations, the, the jury will come and really prove the prizes. So they are completely independent from us and uh, honest in their decisions. Yeah. And uh, we have this system that we copied from that, so every time the next speaker is involved, and then the speaker that has to speak after that, he should be ready and uh, put himself here or there, to be ready to make it smooth and to make positions So uh, we finally start with the first talk, that's uh, Florian Mendel with uh, FSC 2018 Statistics and Information on Cost. So the final portfolio teaser algorithms will be released on December 2019. <laughs> okay, uh, about TOSC, so since uh, 2016, TOSC uh, moved to a content journal mode, and basically what is new that all papers published at FSC will be uh, published in Open Access Journal, where we have four deadlines every year. Uh, in March, uh, June, uh, September, and uh, end of November. And as for all the major ICR conferences, we also have a rebuttal phase where the authors uh, can respond to the review comments. And in the review process of two months, we will decide on the status of all papers. So either a paper will be immediately accepted, or there will be a minor revision, which means we assign a shepherd, which will uh, help the authors to improve uh, the final version of the paper. And uh, there's also the option of a major revision when we ask the authors to resubmit the paper to one of the next two deadlines, a uh, significantly revised version of the paper. And last but not least, there's of course a reject, which means that a lot of more effort is needed to improve the paper before it can be published. So in general, a paper is supposed to have at most 20 pages, but if you need more than that for security proofs or some other stuff, you can go for a long paper, which can have more than 20 pages. We're also searching for a systematic systemization of our knowledge papers. We're still working on, on the progress, uh, how to elevate them, because they are also supposed to have something new and new contribution to the community and not being on the uh, paper. And of course, the main goal of us is that it will be included in uh, Thompson by around uh, 2020. So what about uh, the statistics? So last year we got uh, 174 submissions, where a few of them were major revisions, and so we had roughly 150 new papers submitted to FSE, which is a new record, I think which is a very good uh, progress we are very happy here. In general, what you see here is that in the beginning of the year we have uh, fewer submissions, and then at the end of the year, which is also very close to the original deadline of FC, we have uh, many more submissions. But in general, at, e at each issue, we accepted around uh, 10 to uh, 40 papers. And also the number of major revisions, which are the yellow papers, increases uh, with the number of submissions we have. So the acceptance rates, of course, are the first for all the four issues, uh, depending on, on the number of submissions as well. And in particular, if you have major revisions from the previous issue, it's more likely to get accepted because we are just taking into account all the review comments. 
Uh, the acceptance rate was uh, around 28%, uh, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't come, the resubmissions is about 32%, which is similar to what we have uh, in FSE in the past as well. So what about uh, the resubmissions? So most of the major revisions where the authors have uh, time the next two issues to resubmit the paper were actually uh, resubmitted. And what you see here, we have many resubmissions in the, in the first and the last deadline, which is a result that during the end of the year you get more submissions and then they're resubmitted to the first issue of the next year. And in percentage you see that here, of course, that correlates to the number of other submissions we have in this issue here. <coughs> So uh, what's important with this uh, new publication model, as I said before, the goal is uh, to be indexed uh, the Thompson around 2020, so please cite those papers also from other journals like uh, TCC, Journal of Technology, or in uh, other LNCS proceedings. Everything we published in, in the journal is actually uh, reviewed by the committee, and if you need more than 20 ba pages, then you can the one paper. Uh, we are not reviewing appendices, so that's not reviewed and not part of the final version. As I said before, we also want a systemization of knowledge papers. Uh, so please uh, submit them if you have some uh, good ideas there as well. And in general, please keep in mind that uh, if you get a major revision, it's also a lot of work for the editorial board and reviewers. So please uh, only submit uh, very good and finished papers. And in particular, uh, to reduce the workload for Taylor and his team and Friedrich in particular, please do not have the LaTeX file and the pen that we use in the papers. That's causing a lot of effort uh, to people doing their technical and text over here. And in particular, uh, camera ready means uh, camera ready, so that's very nice. So you don't have to think of messing up your publication, but then on the other side, you're responsible for what's in the final version and you cannot change it afterwards. Or it's very difficult to do that. And for the references, uh, please use one of the summer libraries uh, for doing that. That's again uh, saving a lot of efforts for doing the type of thing. So, uh, we have a huge committee to handle all these uh, many submissions we have received, and we are very thankful to all of them for contributing to uh, allowing us to combine this good program. And they uh, spent a significant effort in reviewing all the papers, so we told them the the committee did more than 600 reviews in this year, which is a lot of work. And many of the committee members spent additional time for shepherding uh, many revisions and helping daughters to improve the work. And I think this is worth an applause for them. So, of course, there are many other people we are thankful, in particular. Elena for hosting the conference and doing a very nice job here. I think everything is uh, going very smooth and the venue is uh, really great here. We are thankful to uh, Mark Stevens for giving this nice and to talk in the morning. And of course for Pia and Johan for chairing the run session. And last, last but not least, of course, to all the sponsors giving us money uh, to do this event here. So of course, uh, there are many other people involved as well we want to thank. So first of all, of course, uh, Pedro and his team for doing the cost proceedings, in particular uh, Pedro who is doing all the web setting and, and the web page of DOS, and also uh, Shaya Levy for, for doing the, the review system and creating all the accounts there as well. And then, of course, last but not least, uh, the FEC steering committee, which gives us uh, advice for, for doing the, the conference and doing the, the publications there as well. And, of course, we're very thankful to all of you being here and the authors submitting good papers to allow us to have a nice conference. Thank you. Okay, so the next speaker is uh, Anton Momento. We will speak about maximum expected differential probability and maximum expected linear differential linear probability over two rounds of two is in the you have five minutes.
it is uh, an L6 cipher with uh, size a block uh, 128 bit and uh, key size uh, 256 bit. Uh, this contains uh, nine full frames. Uh, <coughs> this slide shows the transformation classical L6. Uh, and so, uh, here are shown two rounds of the algorithm for two pairs uh, of plain text. And uh, this is an example of two round differential trade. Yeah. And uh, let the omega be two round differential trail, uh, then EDC is probability of a differential trail and uh, diff is the set of uh, corresponding delta x delta y differential trails and uh, we uh, calculate m edp for two of our uh, yeah and uh, <coughs> uh, consulting highly probable differential trails for elastic cipher uh, with MDS uh, is associated with finding in these code blocks uh, with uh, the smallest byte weight and uh, we construct uh, this algorithm and uh, uh, we construct algorithm for finding the best differential and um, it was shown that uh, the best differential with MEDP uh, at this slide uh, contains only one differential trail. And uh, um, uh, the same result uh, for MELP for uh, linear paths. Uh, and uh, we um, can estimate of differential with uh, uh, with uh, more, more active as box uh, and uh, the upper bound is built by using this uh, property. Uh, so uh, we have presented a very simple file of box this small part in uh, all these codes uh, and uh, we uh, find all the best differential trails uh, and the uh, linear characteristics <coughs> and differential uh, in two ground Kuzmic. I'll just make a quick announcement that was skipped. Uh, so it's an announcement from the CSR committee and the previous date for the release of the portfolio that was given was missing, can be given in the Julian calendar, so the corrective date is January 8, 2020. Next one. 
renowned cryptographer, shares the secret to achieve fame, glory, and eternal life. Um, what's the secret? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. Um, this paper is not a joke. You may laugh, but you shouldn't. It's quite horrifying. Well, to be fair, to be honest, I haven't found a paper, a crypto paper, which fits to this uh, kind of debate. So, this is like uh, from Brit from uh, British Medical Journal. So apparently, they have like a mock-up se section uh, each year in which they publish uh, mock papers. And apparently, one of them got cited for 500 times. So be careful with your ground uh, session talks. <laughs> All right. Now, when you read these 19 shocking paper facts, you've changed the way you give reviews forever. Try to find out. All right. So now I'll show you a bit of an example of how easy it is to change clickbait to crypto. So originally it's like a McDonald's paycheck, but it's it can easily be replaced like, uh, uh, here's a paycheck for an university researcher and here's my job dropping to the floor. Uh, yeah, I guess that's not so funny. <laughs> 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 uh, what this ugly little paper can do to survive is actually pretty genius. Uh, well, I don't know the secret of that. So, but anyway, tomorrow, Let's finish with the that for myself. There will be an amazing talk given by me. Um, and you are the people of Bruce. Exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, because the previous announcement was also skipped, I will make it myself. Um, so, an announcement from the Revolutionary Caesar Committee. Power to the people in order to accommodate the current political situation, which has changed. The release date of the final Caesar portfolio has been postponed to the decade of the first decade of Thermidor, année 223. To that form of analysis, which by noting the relative frequency of its several terms would furnish him with the key to a cipher message, he would at once have remarked that no expression, not even the most common forms of speech, occurred in it nearly so often as at my cousin's the Germantes, at my aunt Germantes, LCR's the Germantes' house, my cousin Germantes' dogs. This, exp this excerpt of Swan's Way by Marcel Proust was brought to you by Blocklist, the smart blockchain publisher, <laughs> and your best choice for putting your next book inside the blockchain. Prices starting from one cent by the ISO Latin character and 10% discount for Nobel Prize laureates. <laughs> submissions, we plan to launch a new journal which is named TALKS. So TALKS stands for Transactions on the Kind of Cryptology that is Symmetric. And uh, the aim of this new journal is to offer a high quality publication value for the RAM session talks. And the motivation of this is that we are not happy with the current situation for several reasons. It's the first reason is that we strongly believe that we need a gold access publication for our RAM session talks. And indeed, 
at the moment, this is not the situation, because the situation is that we only have green open access. The green open access means that the papers are available for free, but only after four years. And that's true. Uh, the Journal of Cryptology is a high quality publication, but it's even considered as a seminal journal in its field, but if you look at its web page, then you will notice that the last issue published corresponds from February 2014. So we expect to have the new issue published by the end of the month. It will be March 2014. But we really believe that it is a problem. And a second reason is that we think that the publication delay within the Journal of Cryptology is unacceptable. To take a single example, this very nice work by Dan Burstyn and his co-authors, it has been presented at Cryptogram session in 2009, but then it has been invited uh, to the Journal of Cryptology, but published only in November 2011. So this means that it took two years for reviewing this work, which was already considered as one of the most important results of, in crypto that year. So we believe that this is really dis discouraging, especially for young researchers, as in this case. And so for this reason, we think that we need to move to another model. So we want to move to a model which is a bit similar as what we have for TOSC. So we know that uh, for TOSC, the authors of all papers published in the journal within year M, they present their work at FSC in year M plus one. So for TOSC, we would like to make something which is a bit similar. So the idea is that authors of all papers presented at the run session of FSC in year M will submit their work to the journal within year 2M. So maybe some of you wonder why we have this factor too. This is because we have a long-term view of our journal, and so we would like to be ready for the post-quantum world. So as you know, because of the rumors of Robson, we need to multiply every parameter by factor 2, and so this is what we plan to do here right now. Um, also, our aim is to get an impact factor, so this will be only after, two, after three years, and nobody knows how this impact factor is computed, but what is clear is that it depends on the number of citations received by the papers. So this is a warning, this holds also for tasks, not only for talks. And please, uh, Florian already said this, but please make sure that the references to the tasks buried paper are, are really clean, otherwise they won't comment. Um, here I have a few nice pictures. This is for the, the Kanye Mendel Award. and of the FSC steering committee, I would like to thank the program committee for TOSC, but also for TOSC. And uh, because, well, because we have this excellent program in, in, during these three days, and within the program committee, of course, the hardest work is for our two co-editors in chief, Florian Mendel and Maria Naya Placencia. And since we change our publication model, this means that uh, their work has been multiplied by a factor of four. I think it's even strictly greater than four because they have to handle all revisions and so on, and so four issues every year, of course. So thank you very much, Florian and Maria, and I would like to take the opportunity to thank you with a very nice plaque from ISCR. checking the references, for updating the website, for generating the metadata, and so on. 
And so for this reason, I would like to thank Gregor, our managing editor, and also Friedrich Schwimmer, who helps a lot, and Katrin Lustrosu from, uh, from the, the library of Bochum's University. So please, uh, at least Gregor and Friedrich are, should be somewhere in the room. I would like to. Paper, just looking at the paper. 
and to make some folds or remove something, just something which uses the circuit. And we assume that it should be easier to solve each problem independently. To show this, we show a solution for value hiding, which is based on nonlinear masking. which protects against the new linear algebra attack and also classic linear masking which protects against the correlation attack and we also have a provable security against these attacks but our approach requires some similar random number generator which should be easier to obfuscate to integrate in the white box but we assume that it's easier than generic obfuscation as a conclusion <laughs> we have new directions for white boxes. Please do your research, check our paper, and wait for an update for provo security and more attacks on white boxes. Thank you. SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Here I declare that I have nothing to do with this whole sponge function thing. In particular, the Ketchak team has used my name for their shameless propaganda without contacting me. <laughs> and anyway, I find all this permutation-based crypto overrated, and I think tweakable block ciphers are the way to go for heat crypto. And what is wrong about Haifa profession? So the Caesar committee realized that it's greatly overestimated the importance of distinguished days. Accordingly, the release of the final portfolio is postponed to Unix time. 2 to the power of 31 minus 2 to the power of 29 plus 2 to the power of 27 minus 7, which is a prime number which uh, efficient arithmetic. Um, so, yeah, uh, I will talk about football. So, I come from Paris and uh, we have this uh, wonderful uh, football club which is a Paris Saint Germain and always meets uh, the football team of Lille. Lille is a city in the north of France and uh, somewhere there is the uh, same, um, same material as uh, here in Bruges, it's basically the same, but it's uh, not as. Nice. So, uh, why I'm talking about football is because yeah, uh, we uh, cryptanalyze uh, a cipher that is called Lee, and it's related. Why it's related? Because they, are, they just spell the same way, okay? It's just, just the way it is. So, uh, Lee is, uh, is, a, is a string cipher, and it has a key of 80. And uh, the key is uh, k1 is 40 bits and k2 is 40 bits, and you have a IV, and the permutation is always uh, changing uh, at each uh, time using a uh, node value c0 and c1 here. And the uh, uh, end permutation is about uh, six rounds or even more so with two key with a permutation that is this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, link with football, football is lost here, but. Uh, so, uh, just notice that you only have uh, S0 that appears uh, here and S1, S2, S3, S4 does not appear. So, uh, that means you have uh, uh, IV key pairs that uh, basically uh, do, are doing the same uh, encryption with just a difference. So, that just means that we can recover the circuitry with 2 to the power of 79 and not 2 to the power of 80. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, an easy patch for this cipher is just to change the, 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 the high pattern. So, in the first version, the high B was padding with uh, 40 zero at the end. So, now I'm proposing to patch the high with 40 bits at the first one. And I think we should call this cipher Paris because Paris is better than real. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, 
So first, an announcement from the Caesar Committee. Do not wait anymore. The final post for you might be announced today. For you, the Caesar Committee is offering free tickets for a space trip around the solar system at relativistic speed. Waiting for a distant event has never been simpler. The committee will start collecting applications at the end of the round session. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to present the result of the Ketchak Analysis Prize that we as a, the Ketchak team started hopefully one year ago. So as a Belgian, we believe that the best way to motivate people to work is to eat or to drink. And uh, if you visit a bit the city here, you will see that many shops that sell beers. And that's what we propose to, to, to get for the best trip analysis of Ketchak. So if you don't know the chair for school, the candidate of the Caesar committee with which you can get the results in a few years or distance, long distance. Okay, so what was the, the prize we started of, uh, one year ago? So the rules was to provide uh, the best paper and basically we set up, find, we defined a few rules, but basically you could attack reduce round or uh, you could increase the weight, tweak a bit the uh, to make it a bit simpler, and then you will submit the paper to some email address, and we will choose the best paper after January 31. So now I'm going to show you the candidate. <laughs> Next, it's intense. So we got basically three submissions. Uh, the first submission was really quick. So apparently he was waiting for the prize, he knew we had to take one. And so this is from uh, Zion Wang Dong, Zeng Li, Zion Wang Wang, and Li, sorry if I missed that. And so the cube like uh, seven one ski recovery attacks on Ketchup Senior. So basically they managed to recover the key in a Ketchup strong version of Ketchup. The second paper was from Ling Song, Yang Wu and Dab Ping Shi about more kind of similar kind of attack, conditional cube attacks on the hand reduced sketcher. And the third one day you knew the board of the league because it was presented today from uh, Thomas Wu, William Hotella and Maya Naya Placencia. And it was about state recovery attacks on Ketcher Junior. Okay. So now I guess you are waiting for the winner. We have a problem here because basically some people they flew we were playing, and so giving them beers that would be really tough for them. So we decided actually to change a bit the rules, and we said that maybe we could also offer some chocolate. So I hate the chocolate. So of course these are the finest chocolate you can find. Some extension of the chocolate. So the winner is basically everybody wins. <laughs> so you can come and collect your prize if you want. So that you are, I think you want to someone should pick up the prize for them. You know, uh, go. What's the name? Gauri Wong. Gauri Wong. If you could come collect the prize. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> maybe uh, if you can come and also collect the prize.
because it, it's energy, it's sugar, so it's very good for the brain. But if you start to be short of ideas, then we will have a lot of work. <laughs> Thomas Perrin, who's going to do something similar for skinny. Thank you. Uh, so unfortunately, we have no gift for them because we just 
they didn't read the return, so I would advise them to, to ask the people who won uh, the prize for the KT competition if they can share a bit. Uh, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's okay, right? I mean, we're both doing competition, we're doing the same job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just so that's the, basically almost the same table as we, we showed last, uh, last time. So, this is since we're trying to compete with Simon, uh, we're trying to see how many rounds can be attacked, how many. Uh, Ross, we need to prove differential linear cryptanalysis resistance. Uh, so yeah, it's boring for you, but you can check it at home. I guess the site will be online. And yeah, so just to show that we are still competitive in Simon. Thanks a lot for your attention.
So, yeah. Okay. So when I first came to FS, uh, FSC 2018, of course I was expecting a lot about two keywords. First was symmetries. And since this morning when I've been listening to the talks, and I can bet that if we do it, uh, like a drinking game on, on this word differentials, it will be a fun day today. Okay. So uh, this got me to this question like, can for once uh, the symmetries and differential E's can we relax on this? And like, so this afternoon was a funny, uh, like quite a fun and sunny day. And uh, I thought just take a walk around, think, of, uh, think about this. And when I think a lot, I could find the answer just by staring at it. And the answer is over here. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite you to Cosay 2018. So, uh, Cosay 2018, uh, so Cosay is a, a workshop on site channel and attacks and secure design. And this time it's in Singapore. So you have a nice uh, view of Singapore. It will be located uh, in center of Singapore. Um, that is uh, the NGO Alumni Club, which is right in the center over there. So it is uh, quite equidistant from NTU that is on this side, and the downtown area that is the, the fun part of Singapore. And uh, to give you some, some facts and figures, uh, the, the workshop exists since uh, 2010. Uh, this is nine of the series. Uh, it was previously located in uh, different places, including Darmstadt in Germany, Paris, Berlin, and Graz. And this is the first time that we bring it to Singapore, and the first, therefore the first time in Asia. Uh, we have 14 accepted papers, we have two invited talks, and uh, we also have a co-located uh, event that is Emertech, where we'll be talking about security of emerging technologies. So, thank you. Carlos from uh, SAC. Do I have to read this in here? If you want to. Do you want me to read this in? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Alright, so an announcement from this is a committee. Okay. So, due to the clarity error, the committee has realized that the cost of a fast space travel is beyond its current needs. We decided that the only accepted solution to ensure that this, some of you who learn the composition of the final report today was to drastically advance the data of its announcement. Stay tuned for more exciting information. Okay, so something a bit more exciting. Uh, so, uh, SAC 2018, so we'll be this year um, in Canada. In, uh, well, Canada is always every year, but it's in Calgary. In August is also always in uh, so it's a nice uh, photo of, of Calgary. Um, it will be held at, at uh, Universal Calgary. And actually this 25th edition of SAC, so it's a special uh, 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 one. And the theme is, uh, if you know how SAC works, there's always four things. And the first three are, are traditional ones, which is, you know, sort of FSC type of thing, and then chess type of thing, and then uh, math stuff. But the fourth one is, this year is you know, IoT cryptography. So, um, if you have your papers in this area, it's a very hot topic. There'll be some NIST competition coming soon. And so, they have a nice place to present your work. And in addition, so, um, so the conference is Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So, uh, for about the last three years or so two years, SAC has also a summer school, which will be on Monday and Tuesday. So, the organizers uh, local. So SAC always has a local organizer, which is Mike Jackson, which is local and myself, which is the external um, program chair. Okay, maybe you're asking, so what is, what is Calgary? You know? Okay, so Calgary um, is the largest city uh, in the Canadian province of Alberta with about 1.2 million people, which it happens to be the third largest uh, in Canada. Everything is from Wikipedia. Um, it's the first Canadian city to host the Winter Olympic Games, which was 1988. What was the second one? Vancouver, right, okay, right. And it's also, you know, the fifth most liberal city in the world uh, in 2017, according to the Economist Intelligence Unit. Um, and actually, it's, it, Wikipedia says also for eight years on the road, but I didn't put that. So you have a nice city, you have mountains, so the Austrians in the audience, you know, you can bring your shoes and you know who you are, and you can climb a mountain during lunch break. 
<laughs> uh, how do you get to um, to Coldery so the direct flies from from London, Frankfurt, uh, Amsterdam, Narita, uh, Beijing, and uh, also from lots of uh, US cities in, in, in Canada. And and if you're actually going to go to crypto, which is the following uh, week, then it's about three hours from LAX. Okay. But also Calgary has something very interesting, which is very topical for what we talk about. Calgary actually is the home of the Caesar cocktail. Not the Caesar competition, but the Caesar cocktail. And if you didn't know, the Caesar cocktail is made of two shots of vodka and a pinch of four solutions, like five dashes of Tabasco. And well, you can read that. And according to Wikipedia, it's a, it's a cocktail is very popular for as a hangover to though its effectiveness has been questioned. So, so that's a good thing for us to try when we, when we get to uh, sack. So the important thing is uh, deadline is the 9th of May, so it's not close to any FSC, so it's not sent to SAC, not to FSC. Probably it's nice in the Paris. And then we have about seven, that's what people say, that. and there's uh, several weeks of review, and then you have all the usual thing, and mid-August uh, you'll be there. And so see you in Calgary. And that will be the trophy for the Caesar competition, is the Caesar cocktail. Okay, thank you. Okay, so next is Yuri Watanabe speaking about feelings for automotive big ADS. Thank you for the introduction. I will hear, uh, hear everyone. I will hear about the Kankuro AIS team in Japan. <coughs> I will talk, I would like to talk about the extending critics for automotive PKUs. PKU system, uh, uh, PKU systems are widely used in modern cars uh, and uh, utilize critical, critical hit protocol uh, on communication between uh, people and uh, a weekly ECU. We consider that uh, this system requires uh, PKE software and hardware flexibility, meaning more packing in both of software and hardware. Uh, there are uh, public protocols regarding this uh, check ready protocol, uh, which is one of them, uh, use a second box cycle. Uh, TK Tower proposed a uh, PKE protocol. Uh, which has countermeasure against the uh, tracking uh, of the keyboard. Uh, this protocol, uh, we call this protocol uh, check ready protocol. Uh, this protocol uh, uses uh, the Zika Box Cyber is shown. As shown. As shown in this equation. Uh, in, in this presentation, we identify uh, the target to hydraulic server uh, uh, to be employed check ready protocol uh, whose performance we evaluate. And the hydraulic uh, server server weighing 100 cm uh, and the tickle uh, box server skinny and uh, just get well macaroons. We consider just get web as a box cycle and use it as a PK. What is the progress of uh, what is the progress of Felix in evaluating uh, the check ready protocol? We consider that uh, Felix evaluates only primitives and more operations uh, and uh, has small flexibility of data rates. In order to solve this problems, uh, we extend Felix. Uh, in our evaluation, we implement primitives uh, and uh, processes of check ready protocol in the vehicle. We also evaluate uh, short message performance of storing cycles. Uh, we show uh, our evaluation results uh, of primitives and check ready protocol uh, respectively. Uh, these graphics uh, show uh, the results of the check ready protocol employing the target primitives. Uh, as a result, uh, in, in the point of our consumption, uh, in the point of our consumption, uh, claim 
अभी मेरे प्रिय जाते हैं और जो एक है खास फिफ्टी परसेंट और मेज स्किन This is to let you know that we, the IAC, there is an R missing. The IAC, as the Prime Learned Scholarly Association about Crypto, have successfully trademarked the name Crypto. Consequently, you are hereby required to choose another name for your annual beach party. We can propose Crypto Not Currency or Crypto No No as a suggestion. It's essentially, the AIC board. from my talk. Uh, so I'd like to talk a bit on the 3 XOR problem. So it's a well-known problem. You are given a hash function or whatever function. You try to find three values but the sum is zero. And we know that uh, well, if you, of course you can generalize the number of uh, values you want to sum. So if you have only two of them, uh, the best algorithm is to do the number two from the Berkeley paradox. And if you have three, actually we don't know how to do much better. We can do slightly better but not much. And when you have four, then uh, we can actually do better. So, uh, there's been some nice recent results. There's a paper that will be shown uh, next Wednesday, where they do uh, they propose new algorithms and they do an experiment. They implement this for a 96 bit Shadow 56, and their computation took about 10,000 CPU hours with a large amount of RAM. And if you look at the paper, they give an example, and as I say, the reader can readily check the example. And so, I checked it. And uh, yeah, I don't know where the zeros. So actually, there's a small typo. You have to change the, the case of the example. And if you uh, just do it, so if you look at those letters in here, so there's a small f and small f. And if you put them uh, in big ones, then it works. Careful. Uh, and well, I tried to play a little bit with this. And actually, what I did is I found a way to find the next one for 119 bits. So it's much bigger. And it actually took only five minutes. Uh, yeah, I think then this is swappable, it doesn't really matter. So how do they do that? Uh, well, of course, I'm a cryptographer, so what do I do? I cheat, right? <laughs> that's, that's our job, basically. So I use the small pre-computation. I didn't even do it myself, so it's fine, right? It's not really pre-computation. Uh, it was actually distributed in a number of countries, a lot of computation in China, in Iceland, in Canada, in the US. Nice countries, so maybe you get a hint of what we're talking about. Um, uh, yeah, computation took actually a few years. Uh, I think it used about a gigawatt of power, so that's about half the consumption of Belgium, I think. So, yeah, it's actually a big, uh, big computation. Um, yeah, it's something about miners, first of all, guys. They uh, compute hashes for fun somehow, and so they like to have very small hashes. And uh, they use this to run some kind of IO network. Doesn't matter. And uh, so if you look at uh, those small hashes that they compute, uh, they actually, if you look at what they do in Bitcoin, uh, they use uh, Shadow 56 hashes. And if you look at what they publish, there are about 2 to the 17 hashes with 64 leading zeros. So it's really nice if you want to do something with that. And if you prefer Ketchak instead of uh, Shadow, uh, there's also Ethereum, which uses Ketchak. 
So uh, they're not that good, but that's because they don't use just HI, they do some kind of memory hard function on top of it. So uh, it's not really optimized to just compute HI. <coughs> so uh, how do you get a free XOR from this? Well, we just take this list of values with which already have lots of zeros, and you run your favorite free XOR on this. It's super efficient. And you get a better result that you really do the free XOR by yourself. Right? So that's, that's the cheating part. <laughs> um, so actually, uh, when we do uh, a crypto, we like to do demonstration of attacks sometimes, like for this uh, 3XOR case. And so we, we often take like zero as a target, and that's very nice, of course. So we did this for uh, oops, sorry. So we did this for this uh, 3XOR. Uh, it was done a few years ago for the compression function of MD4, and so we fixed some size and then tried to find a preimage of zero, basically. So that's very nice. Uh, now the problem is when you look at those miners guys, they actually do the same thing. And they do it better than this. Uh, they can do uh, a lot more. They can, they can actually, they have uh, an 87 bit pre image of SHA 256. So that's really uh, something hard. Even, I mean, if I, if I have an attack on, uh, on SHA 256, let's say I gain a factor 2 to the 10 for pre images, that's a huge result. But what can I do to prove it? Well, I, I can't do it as good as this, right? I don't have enough computation, so that's a bit annoying for us. They just use brute force, but they have so much power, but they do something much better than this. And I think for Ketchak, you can get something like 17 bits, but it's, uh, it's actually a bit hard to recover the exact values. You have to download the whole blockchain, find out where the stuff is, and it's a, it's a bit of a mess. But yeah, uh, and actually, if you look in terms of records, the biggest computation we do in, uh, in crypto, uh, so the Shaman collision that uh, Mark talked about uh, earlier today, it's about 2 to the 61 computation, so that's really a lot for us. But if you look at Bitcoin, they're doing like 2 to the 74 in just one hour. It's not fun, right? <laughs> but actually, they're even stealing uh, our name, crypto, like, like this uh, AIC something, yeah, it's related. If you, if you go on uh, Twitter and look for crypto, you get the at crypto account, what is it? Bloomberg Crypto, you look at how cryptocurrencies and blockchain are reshaping the world. This is crypto now. If you look for a cryptanalyst, this is what you get. <laughs> it's really a shame. So we should, we should do something. We should fight. We should get the, the, the name back. So they're, 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 yeah, they're, they're stealing our name. They're getting all the money, all the girls, everything. So what, what can we do? So uh, all the boys are so close. So uh, what can we do? Well, uh, maybe we can just become crypto analysts. Just change your CV, analyst. maybe you get more money like this. A lot of companies just put blockchain on their name and they get rich. You can do the same. Uh, maybe you can find some way to do something useful with all those uh, 256 hashes with lots of zeros. Or maybe create a new coin so that they can, we can outsource some of our computation to them. And if we create a coin based on shower collision, we can get lots of collision. So we just not do computation ourselves. Or, yeah, maybe another option, we should just rebrand uh, crypto and uh, propose we now start calling uh, our field a uh, pre-shirt key two-party blockchain. I think that's great. We get a lot more attention. Thank you. So we are going to give the best paper award of this year's FTC. We just hope that none of the reward authors has gone to the toilet like last year. <laughs> so. so this year's best paper award goes to uh, Colin Chignon, De Mathur, Henri Gilbert, Jean Gou, Jean, Jean Renéna, and Ling Song for key recovery attacks on full cravat. Please come here to the Congratulations.
to get, I think, still landed some announcements related to Syria. some misinformation running around about Caesar. Uh, so this is actually a serious announcement. Let me remind people, first of all, what the actual schedule is versus the originally planned schedule. The plan was all figured out in 2012 of one stage per year for five years. We would start with, well, beginning of 2013, saying, all right, here's the announcement for another competition. And then 2014, the submissions, 2015, second round, 2016, third round. And then finalists, which should not be confused with the final portfolio. Now, what's actually happened and happening is the following. Um, first of all, there's lots of people who said, uh, can we delay the submission deadline? And lots of people, potential submitters and committee members said, well, uh, yeah, it would be good to have a little more time. And then things moved forward, and then people started asking for more uh, interaction between the submitters and the uh, committee. And so, we ended up with the following schedule. Uh, the first round submissions got delayed a bit, the second round uh, announcements got delayed a bit, et cetera, et cetera. And here we are in March 2018, and there actually is, at the end of these slides, announcement of the finalists. And then sometime, I, the current sense that I have from the uh, voting members of the committee is that uh, the last stage of the final portfolio will be relatively short. Exact schedule has not been settled, but I would guess the final portfolio would be uh, this year. Um, basically, this is last chance to, to break stuff after you see the finalists. Then uh, if you can break something, then obviously it's not going to be in the final portfolio. And hopefully the focus on a small number of finalists will give people a chance to be really confident in these uh, last ones. Um, we specified back in 2016 some use cases, and this is something where there are some finalists in each use case. Use case one, lightweight applications, the critical feature, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the critical feature is that this fits into some small environments. Now small can be two different things. One is a hardware area being small, the other is code being small for, for a small processor that doesn't have a lot of space for, for handling your, your crypto. Uh, use case two is for high performance, and again, there's two possibilities for the performance target. One of them is, say, a big server sitting somewhere, want to go as quickly as possible with a server handling a lot of connections. The other possibility is you've got dedicated hardware, and you want to get really good throughput, or throughput for a certain amount of area in, for example, hardware handling or router doing VPNs and stuff like that. Uh, and it, uh, each of these use cases also has some extra features which are meant to be tied to uh, in this use case. It makes sense to have some extra things which, which are also weighted as part of uh, deciding what's appropriate for this use case. And the third use case we announced is defense in depth. And this one, the most important feature is that if you're not able to generate unique nonces, then there's still going to be some security left. And while there's lots of variations and extra features, for instance, protection against release of unverified plain text, um, but the critical feature here is that you survive having nonces um, repeated, which means they're not nonces anymore, and that's use case three. All right, so trying to be as robust as possible. Uh, before I give you the list, I should read the following as a reminder of one of the things that every submitter had to sign as part of the submissions, which was the submitter or submitters understand that the selection of some algorithms is not a negative comment regarding other algorithms, and that an excellent algorithm might fail to be selected simply because not enough analysis was available at the time of the committee decision. If we had a lot more human resources on analyzing dozens and dozens of, of submissions, then we'd be able to say, yeah, okay, we're confident in dozens and dozens of submissions, but the reality is that 
well, there's not enough human resources to analyze everything that we want to have analyzed. So sometimes we end up having to say, well, here's something that might be good with more analysis, but the analysis hasn't happened. And well, because people happen to have focused on certain ciphers, those are going to be ones where we'll, we'll just focus on those more. They might be worse than, than things that are not uh, finalists and don't end up in the final portfolio, but we have to get uh, the human resources allocated. So. All right, so without further ado, here's the slide you're waiting for. Here's the finalists. For use case one, there's ACORN and there's ASCON. For use case two, there's a little star on Aegis I'll come back to in a moment, and there's also Morris and OCD. And for use case three, the defense in depth, there's Colm and Deoxys two. The star on Aegis is that the, uh, let me summarize it in my own words, the official statement from the committee is what you see on the slides. Uh, in my own words, uh, the committee isn't happy with both Aegis 128 and 128L, so it's not going to be that both of those end up in the final portfolio, even assuming that Aegis ends up in the final portfolio. It will only be one of those, and unless there's some surprises, it will be Aegis 128, which is a simpler one, but well, the official statement from the committee is what you see. So again, this is uh, last chance to break stuff before the final portfolio, um, and uh, if you're uh, people who are on this list, then, well, uh, I'm sure you're happy to see yourselves on this list. If you're not on the list and you submitted something, then, again, uh, it's probably just because there wasn't enough analysis for the committee to be confident. And, well, if you can get people to do more analysis, then you can probably get uh, something which is not selected to still be something widely deployed. Things like, you know, Blake has a whole lot of deployment, and uh, don't be too bummed if you're not on the system. All right, that's it. Thanks for your attention. So that was the last talk. And uh, to give a few minutes to our jury to select who win the prestigious prizes in front of me, uh, there will be just a short extra talk on uh, how we had to select uh, the RAM sessions. I will put it here. Uh, so, because we already have the, reg the, the regular PC report, we thought it would be nice to have a run session PC report. Uh, so, for everyone and myself. So, some submission statistics we received 327 submissions. Uh, on to be fair, we started counting all of the emails we received uh, when the call had been published as submission to the run session. So, a lot of them were quite unrelated to, to symmetric crypto at all, but uh, well, we, we never knew. Uh, so maybe that's a new record for a session. So we reviewed or at least looked at all of them, uh, well, at least one of us, and uh, we selected 14 papers plus two invited talks by uh, the actual PC chairs of FSE. Um, so some statistics for submissions by country. Uh, because we didn't have really any way to guess uh, where the authors were from, and because now we're in Belgium, we assume that all of the submissions came from Belgium. So 100%. Uh, so now about the, the acceptance rate, well, then again for Belgium, everything can be person. So well done, Belgium. Uh, you know, good to go as a, as a cryptographic capital, and at least this is doing a bit better than the Winter Olympics, where uh, if I'm not wrong, Belgium just won a single silver medal. <laughs> Uh, so now it will be time for the prize, and uh, I will let the jury come when they're ready. Hopefully, uh, just be a bit patient, and uh, uh, thanks.
the talk, talks run recognition memorial for the presentation that everyone thought would be boring, but we managed to make it funny. Well done. Um, goes to uh, Carlos Seed. <laughs> Why you thought it was going to be? Uh... <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the uh, the Kenya Magdalene Award for the fanciest life um, goes to Gregor uh, Nyander. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we go up now. 